We got a roll call. Yes. Great. All right, let's call the meeting to order at 7.03. We'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you. It's nice to see everybody, and I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And we will try to keep this um, short and sweet because I'm sure everybody has a lot going on the next week or so. So um, getting started, we have November's action items. And um, the first thing was that I would reach out to Deb to hold to schedule a meeting with the trustees. And um, so why don't we just talk about that now, since strategic plan is our next thing. So um, Deb is not going to be able to meet with us for a while because of things going on with her. Um, so she is you know, more than amenable to us deciding to stop the process with her, or we could continue with her. Um, I guess I'm going to just open it up to discussion if people have thoughts about how to proceed. I think it would take a long time to find somebody else okay yeah <laughs> i mean i mean i think she thought february potentially yeah so, i mean i agree the work is already she's already done a lot she knows us right. is your mic on yeah it, that's, yep. yeah so she knows us um we she was the person we sought out to hire for a reason so ruth marie we're gonna say something she was, she was very clear all of that burning Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, any other comments or thoughts about it? I agree. I it'll, agree. It'll take us longer okay. to like so then just so we somebody else. Yeah. So just so we have a record of it, I'm just going to make a motion that we um, continue the strategic planning process with Deb and work to accommodate her schedule. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Okay, great, thank you. I will reach out to her and, and let her know that that's what we decided. So we'll put that on my first action item. Um, great, thank you. Uh, let's see, Yvette and Janet, we're gonna coordinate staff gift cards for holiday gifts. I know that is done because I wrote holiday <laughs> notes to everybody and dropped them off with Yvette today. So those are all set. Thank you to Yvette and Janet, and I believe uh, Karen might've gotten yeah, some things yeah. too as well. Um, Jen and or Janet will reach out to Milford Library regarding grants. I did. I've not heard back. Okay. Great. There were um, a couple of other things that were um, not necessarily in this action item, but that I had on my list of things to do. So I think I'll just address them now while we're going through this. One of the things was to um, send out a packet to Terry Knowles, given our current situation, and asking her like for her input on um, specials versus fines and what needs to be accounted for in um, the town budget. And so I did do that. I sent her something um, and she told me she will look it over and she will get back in touch with me. So, and I did send it to Janet for her to just look over be, to make sure. And yes, I did call special line 3829 sometimes. So it was nice to have another pair of eyes and I sent her some accompanying um, documents. And I'm happy to forward that to anybody who is interested in seeing what I sent to her. So you can just let me know at any point if you're interested in seeing that packet. And the other thing was that we had voted for me to send an email to um, Adam Britton, the new um, finance director, since he is new and our budget is unusual compared to the other um, departments. So I did send an email to him and ICC Paul McCallie and also um, Finley Rothhouse, the chair of the town. Um, I just had a blank. The council. town. Thank the you. Council. Town council. I was going to say town committee. Town council. Just because. Our, our situation is different, so they all kind of were on the same page with us that um, when we look at the bottom line of our budget as we submit it, that is not what goes on the warrant because our bottom line includes the $17,200 that we are going to contribute from the trustees. And so I just you know wrote that up and offered that if Adam has any questions to reach out to Janet or to me, and I'm sure they know they can reach out to Yvette too, just so that you know, we help him because it is a very, it's very unusual compared to the other way the departments run. So, Great. yeah. So those were not unofficially on the November action items, but had kind of come up and been voted on. So was there anything else that were um, action items that need to be addressed? Okay, fantastic. Um, SMP, we're just in a holding pattern with the architect. 
we just talked about the strategic plan. We have the building maintenance project list, which Yvette set out to us. So, um, Yvette, I guess the um, roof, the roofer could not meet with us. I haven't heard back. Okay. So I did notice on the roof over Henderson room, it says waiting for energy audit, but actually we're waiting for a meeting with him, right? So that's for the notes. Okay. So if we want to just keep that in. Is there anything else that where people had questions or comments about? No. No. Okay. Great. And then. Oh, oh, the sign. Do you want to address the sign? Um, it, it needs an update, so we're waiting to hear back from the vendor. Okay. All right. So those were all the energy audit. We've already reviewed that. I'm not sure if that needs, we need to keep that on the agenda. We sort of are done with that, I think, but there it is. Okay. Moving on to new business. Um, the FY 2023, 24 budget, general ledger, invoiced manifest and open POs. I didn't have any problems. Does everyone, does anyone need a copy of the invoice? Did I say that badly? Seems to wear emailed it. Oh, yeah. I don't think I got that either. I got yeah. the email. I oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, she did it. She it was right. Oh. oh, okay. Uh, maybe she sent it to me too. I don't remember seeing it, but it could be. There were, there were some clarifications she needed to follow. Okay. It should be a change. Right, were there, I know it's hard to just look at this and slide. Um, were there any questions for Yvette about the invoices, POs? I just, did yeah. you have something, um, Jane? POs, I just had a question on um, the Tucker interior, library interiors was it was open in 2021 for service floor furniture, children's mm -hmm. room desk. Is that something they're just not ready to do? Or she's still deciding on her okay. desk. Um, yep, they're okay. Yeah, still planning to do it, but um, some of the delay is on Tucker because we we have not heard from the vendor. Um, I actually saw them at a conference. Maybe or maybe in the spring, and it was like I have forgot about you. But um, other libraries have mentioned that they aren't hearing back from this particular vendor. So okay, okay. yeah, but they still need a different desk. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if they just forgot about it or felt oh, no. they couldn't move no, forward no. with it no, or no, no. you know <laughs> no. <laughs> Encourage her to make a choice. <laughs> oh, she has her choice. It's uh -huh. the vendor. Oh, a vendor. Who... Okay, I'm sorry. I was under the impression that yeah. it was. No, a... no, we're, no. Okay. Okay. We'll just be noisier. That's all. Okay. All right. Um, so with no questions, we'll move on to the 2024-25 draft budget. Um, Yvette did send forward to, did you forward mm -hmm. it to everybody, the budget, mm -hmm. the town manager's budget? So you might have noticed that the bottom line was slightly decreased, and I looked back on that, and I think it was for, they adjusted how much natural gas was, I believe, which yeah. was one of the numbers we get from them. Right. So I think that's where the increase was. I think it went from 5,200 to 4,200, the decrease, rather. So. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, they reduced our budget. Let's go back and look. Yeah. So so um, that's the column with the town manager. Then we'll have the town council look at it, and we'll get input from them also. That's good. So, so we could didn't deduct anything anywhere else. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Great. I feel very confident with our budget, so I'm, mm. I'm, I think we're in good shape. So, nice. Okay. Policy review. Yvette, did you want to talk about the collection agency under policy review, or do you want to wait and do it under your? We can talk about it now. Okay. Um, so I sent around a request for um, <clears throat> working with a collection agency. Um, Alyssa Jobin wrote this up, and it's pretty, um, I think it's pretty thorough. She had researched um, 
how it would look for us by reaching out to the Manchester City Library that has used this same agency for years. And so it's a company that works with libraries. They understand how we send out billing notices and the you know amount of time that you know in terms of a timeline. Um, so this this um, seemed like a good solution for some of the things that we're running into. And this questions? is for like somebody loses a material or doesn't return a material, correct? And then uh, right, and then and then cost. we. We send out a billing notice, but a lot of times it's it just um, stops there. So it's really just trying to really use this agency to pursue that um, cost and try to recoup some of the money. I'm wondering if um, there's been a change because, I mean, one of the things we thought about when we went fine free was that fines didn't have, didn't encourage people to return the materials necessarily. Um, so I, it says like in going fine free, I'm just wondering if we have more lost materials now than we had prior to this. I don't think it's more. Okay, so it's the same. It's just something that probably should have been addressed before or because well, I mean, if it's- we had we had done some steps to start moving towards engaging with a collection agency. I don't know how many years ago it was that we started asking for you know your birth date. Mm -hmm. on your on your record because that's something that the collection agency would need so it's just been when do we want to actually engage with them and mm -hmm. and it's just now it seems like a good time to do it so i just kind of feel like this goes against what we like we went against fines or we stopped fines because we wanted to encourage people to use the library and the argument for going fines free was it discourages people to come to the library if they have to pay a fine if they don't bring their things back and now with this going to a collection agency it seems even more um, like even a higher step or a worse you could say than paying three dollars in fines and now you're looking at the going after people that are mm -hmm of the $40. That I was looking, yeah, I had that thought too, but then I looked at some of the um, things we've had to pay for, like a play away wasn't returned and that's expensive, you know, and that was for Bedford. It was like borrowed from Bedford. So that could be a significant amount of money. That... Well, we're talking about the PlayStation. That's hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. We do want that back, yeah. right? I, maybe the maybe it's the the how much maybe we need to talk about at what point do we think it's worth calling in the collection agent? You know what I mean? And maybe for us, for some of us, feeling like twenty five dollars might not be worth. You know what I mean? Like what what is the the amount where we're like, yeah, we want that power washer back, right? So what I think maybe the dollar amount might be the a point of discussion. One of the things that Alyssa asked about was, you know because that was also her her question. Um, you know, do we wait until it gets to $50 or $75 or $100? And the collection agency said, um, if you wait until it gets that high, now, it, now it's a gigantic bill that someone won't pay. But if you say, oh, it's only up to 40 or 25, then it's much more manageable to pay. Right, but I'm saying maybe, maybe, and I'm not saying we do this, but maybe we say, eh. $25 is it worth or $40 is it worth it but $100 yes it is worth it because we're talking about $100 when you said the PlayStation that's a totally different realm from like the newest Ellen Hildebrand you know that's a whole different category so I don't know maybe, well, it's up to you maybe we need a policy. <laughs> or what I mean what are your thoughts but um, I was just gonna say I looked um, went to the company's website um, just to learn a little bit more because I was fascinated <laughs> um, with the material um, that was sent out. And um, I kind of just was wondering, like, how much flexibility is there with, like, do we more or less set the rules of, like, how they would go forward, you know, the dollar amounts or the time frames or, like, that sort of thing? Or is it mostly, like, they would just say, we do it this way. 
do you, do you know? I might need to go back and ask those questions, but um, you know, the when we send out notices, that is um, consortium wide, so that's that's all locked okay. into everyone. Okay. Um, I think the I think the question is, do you want to recoup this or no? Well, I think that also do we do we tell them we need you to go to we would like you to pursue this one, or do they get a report from? Like, how do they find out who we want them to get things from? It's just our patrons. Okay, but so Alyssa would reach out to them and say, we want to get this material back, so. And then she would reach out based on the scenarios that we want or decided or. I don't think there, I think there just needs to be, like, if we're doing a dollar limit, it's a dollar limit. Yeah. It's not yeah, like, yeah. oh, well, this person One off. has yeah. the PlayStation, so that's $400 versus the, so this person has all books and that's $300. Right, it's right. like, it's, the limit is 40 or 25 or just that's what yeah. it is. Well, it says, so there's a flat fee of 11.65 per patron sent to the agency. So it doesn't really make sense if it's less than that for us to Correct. send them. Um, but it also says... Um, we currently have 190 patrons with charges over $25. 25. That's, that's a good amount of money. And um, we got 109. 109 over $40. So. That's a great question for Alyssa. And I can always have her come to the meeting to. Oh. Because she's here. the one speaking oh. to the vendor. It says MCL, right? If that's Manchester City mm -hmm. Library, sets their amount at forty dollars, which I would be inclined to follow. But not all of the libraries work with a collection agency. Mm -hmm. They just try to collect the money, you know, themselves, which is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're I think the staff are frustrated with not not really being able to to get Mm -hmm. get some of these things back so well i think that your for me it's like yes of course we would want the money back when you think about the library of things then you are talking about bigger dollar amounts mm -hmm. that are more outlay when you think about the playaways things we borrow from other libraries mm -hmm. because you know a 25 dollar book yes we want it back but is it worth hiring a collection agency for not sure but when you start to get into a little bit bigger i would say even over 40 dollars um then it might make sense but there is something about it that feels a little uncomfortable, right? Against kind of what we're trying to do. So I guess, um, yeah. It's... What kind of questions do you want me to go back through? So what happens? So they go to them and they give them a gentle nudge. Um, but then what happens afterwards? Like the collection agency, like just does it go on their credit record? Like what's the... Mm -hmm. I can find out. Mm -hmm. the question was, if they return the item at that point, does it get into a... Well, based off the policy that the library already has, that it's, at, it's after 60 days, um, it's like at the discretion of the department head, that's the circulation department head, um, if they were to get a refund or if um, any of that, it's at the, her discretion. So... And that assumes that they already paid for it, and they find it and can bring it back. So there's a lot of different kinds of scenarios where you know, at what point do we purchase a replacement copy? You know, because as soon as we purchase a replacement copy, the copy you know it shows up return now. You know, so it's there's how long do you wait? And I think what I'm understanding, you know, from the staff is that we wait a long time for people to return things you know and then there are some instances where how do we you know if we send a, a letter the letter is returned you know at what point do we you know we've done um certified mail sometimes i mean we've really tried a lot of other kinds of things um we've had we've sent the police to a residence to get um a tablet back um because it was not returned and you know it's it they can't use it because it's on our account so it's not like they can do anything with it 
Um, but it's just, I think it's, you know, the point of it's still library material and you should return it. Mm -hmm. So what's the, you know, what's the penalty if you don't return it? Mm -hmm. And we just send letters. So it's just, Do you ever call? Sometimes you can't. Sometimes no one is there. Sometimes someone moves. I mean, there's a lot of, yeah. what I'm saying is there's lots of different kinds of scenarios that are frustrating for the staff because they are trying to pursue this and you know we're not collecting fines it should be very easy to return something because if you turn it late there's no fine it's just just bring it back just bring it back and if you have outstanding um, charges on your on your card then we can address that too well and that's a hidden cost too is the frustration and the wearing on the staff and how going through that and not getting it returned or not not hearing back from people or not reaching people um the other thing too is we're talking about some some dollar items and you said that but if you look at this and you say well four thousand dollars that right now mm -hmm. that's on the low end yeah. of what yeah. you know we potentially don't have collectively um, so i think you know i don't know as we go you know you could put questions down and send them to melissa if that would help um, because I think it would be helpful for her to know what kind of things are mm -hmm. on our mind. People want to send you the question and help. Well, you can just send them to me. Send them to right. Send them well, to me. What are your questions? I guess my question is, so what happens? They do the gentle nudge. And then, like, what happens after that? Like, I, because we are basically, if we are doing this, I want to know that we understand the process. Does it go on their credit report? Like, what happens next after the gentle nudge? Um, what's the next Do you step in the process? I feel like we should have a policy, like this is a proposal. Should we have a policy that says, it, you know, lays out the. I think, well, I think we need to. What happens? Like, if we, if the person still doesn't return it, what's the next step in the process? What do they do after that? You know, well, what, what do you want us to do? Well, I don't. Well, no, we, if you're hiring this agency, then I'm guessing they have a process. And it, all we say, see here is that they use the gentle nudge approach, which focuses them back. And then it says later on that we can restart them, the process. But like after the gentle nudge, what comes next, right? Because we've gentle nudged already, right? You guys have yeah. sent letters and done that sort of thing. So like I guess people hear a collection agency and that they take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to know what the next step is because if, we're, if we are basically hiring someone to do this if for us, I'd like to know what the consequences of that are going to be. I wouldn't want to find out that mm. they did, like that the next step was something that we were like, well, we're not really comfortable with that, right? Okay. So before I would hire them, I'd want to know what that next step is. Or do they find that most of the time people are just coming back after that? Like, I, I don't know, you know. But they have to have another step in their process. Okay. And I think one of the things Melissa has done here that's helpful is she has outlined we can set the time frame, the dollar amount, and specific patron groups of patrons. I'd like to know what her recommendations are for that. Would that be helpful to understand like what well, based on what she's seen, um, what are her, her recommendations for the time frame dollar amount to be put out to her to start the conversation? Yeah, because I think that we would want that in our policy also, like what the time frame is, yeah. and they're gonna be better situated to tell us like we give people this many months and then we set that because mm -hmm. that needs to be outlined in our policy so people are aware that this many months. after this many months if you do not return the material they it have, will go to something like that already but it's mm -hmm. it's the, that next step mm -hmm. it's the after so many months once we've already done our gentle nudges mm -hmm. or or maybe we stop our gentle nudges because there's a policy that says like after so like i think it's after a month you're going to get a letter and and I don't remember all the other dates, um, but maybe that all stops. And once you hit that, you just like you're going to the collection. If you are at that dollar amount as well, I mean, no, that that things. is what happens, right? And then they pick up they pick up the communication, right? So we just want to know what at what point, what time frame does Alyssa want that? Would she recommend that we transition from us from your staff? Okay. telling them to now we're sending it to a collection agency is it two months is it three months like how much time is our staff going to be giving this and putting effort behind it until they say okay we're going to write it so thank you Ruth Marie that's a great recommendation to find that out and also the specific patrons or groups of patrons not to send like what does that entail 
and would we be sending this to other GMILKS patrons? So they could have our materials out, but then they would be the responsibility of that their library to get that back for us. Okay. Other questions for mm -hmm. Alyssa? I mean, hopefully once, if they get that kind of final letter from us that says, or the staff that says, this is going to go to collection now, <laughs> that they will take it seriously well, and bring what, it back. You know? That's the piece that's missing, is our, yeah. our letters don't say that. Right. There's no Cause less gentle message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, I think that would be the helpful part. Right, mm -hmm. but just to be able to say that, that maybe mm -hmm. that then they would. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we should recommend, or she should recommend that they do it all at least as good as ads and sort of like ahead of ads so mm -hmm. they do our work as well. So she's done a, a lot of work on it already, you can see all the information she has in here. Um, and then we will, they will, they will try and set up these to be $150 and charge flat fees per person. I think that's very you know a reasonable setup and probably to go with this the accompanying current policy of how we operate with late materials current state just because i don't know that well enough um today but I hope it's longer than a month because I'm a really slow reader. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get three renewals. <laughs> you get a lot of renewals. Yes. Yeah, but if a book, is, but those. if a book is on hold for someone else, you don't. So then, like, right. where's that tipping point? So I might sure. be with you on that. Um, the other thing, <laughs> I just turn it. You know, I return my book, put it back on my to be read, yep. and then get it Again. later when my current pile. You know, that's what I, do. I wait till it's like, oh, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> it says automatically adding a ten dollar charge to each account that's submitted to. Is that she said that's something she'd recommend? So that would be also mm -hmm. something we'd have to consider. Mm -hmm. if then we're going to charge, and, and that could go on the letter too. In addition to, you'll be sent to collections, and you're right. in addition to right. the now the material, we will be adding a ten dollar fee for the cost of the collection agency. So mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just some questions yeah. to be answered and maybe some like clarification for the process and what she would recommend as a policy and then we could take a look at it in January and kind of hash it out and see. Okay. Any other questions for Alyssa on this? Actually, I guess I do have one. So as of right now, there's 109 patrons over 40. If her comments are right in terms of it's approximately nine per month. I mean, that's like a year. In a year, if all went well, all of these patrons would be done. Do, do we always have patrons that are over $40? Like, is it always, like, every month do we get three or four people over $40? So at, will we always have this collection saying. agency mm. going after people? Mm. Every I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. like, the, these are, how long have these accumulated? Right, right. Are I we, mean, are these, like, yeah. year-long or... It's only been a month. She estimates around 17 patrons per month. That's for the 25, yeah. but it was mm -hmm. 9, 9 to 10, I thought, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Oh, she said, so rough estimate, we maybe see 9 to 10 patrons submitted per month. Yeah, so over 40. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So there might be an initial push because we'd have right. all of these ones that right. are backlogged, and then it would be nine or 10 each month that would come out. Makes sense. I guess that would be another question um, that Alyssa might be able to find out from Manchester is once they go to collections, is so it's like in her examples, it was 17 per month or nine per month. Do they actually get the money back or they've initiated nine and only four of them come back or two of them actually come back do all of them come back mm -hmm. once they're initiated right because if you're paying the agency eleven dollars or whatever each time but then you only get one person you put right. you send ten and you get the materials or money back from mm -hmm. one so is that yeah uh, manchester city library said they recoup the costs of two or three times of paid day service mm -hmm. Sure, but I, I think you're asking for the rate of success. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. So, yeah. right. we can find out. Okay. 
great. No, I think, I mean, this it's good to, for us to gather some information because oh, sure, I yeah. think this is like a, a, a big step, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, it's just we want to make sure that we are making a conscious decision about what we're doing with this. So, okay, great. Thanks to Alyssa and thanks for bringing that to us. And, I, you know, I think it goes without saying if you have other questions that occur to you, by all means, you know, feel free to reach out to Yvette with those questions. Just if you would CC me so I could make notes of them, that would be great. So, okay. Are there any other things under policy that you would like to talk with us about, Yvette? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, grants. Jen. Oh, okay. Um, so I met with Yvette, and we talked a little bit about grants and um, some of the things we would think we could, you know, could apply for and reasons why we couldn't do those. But um, what I wanted to ask you guys today is there is this um, website, GrantStation, that is basically a database for um, grants. Um, you can search it and find grants based on whatever criteria you put in there. And they also have some other um, things on, you know, different, they have webinars and stuff like that that you can access. I think those might be an extra fee for some of those, but they have also some other tutorials. Um, but really the, what would be the benefit is that we can find grants on this. So that is currently, they have a sale, 179 a year or 249 for two years. Um, so for me, I would do the two years just because you have a savings of $54, but um, you know, we, we might want to try it for one year and see how much use we get out of it too. Um, hmm. Do you guys have any questions on that? It does searching for you, or you're signing up so that you can search, or yes, you sign up and then you you know put in your criteria for your search. I see. And then it'll, yeah. Okay. It'll um, give you that. Kind of does that behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was this like? Hmm. Was this recommended to you by somebody, or is it Yvette. something Yvette? Yeah. Oh, Yvette. Yvette have... recommended it. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yes. Uh, was it something um, you've used before yes, that you've think, seen? Yeah, they used to have it. And... Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Okay. Did you have success? Oh, uh, we weren't. <laughs> no. We weren't. There weren't enough people to help look for oh. things. We didn't have a goal of what we were looking for. It's just, you know, um, in the past, some trustees were like, you should look for grants. It's like, er, for what? You know, for what? So okay. that's kind of, I think we, we're a little more focused in on things we could look for grants mm -hmm. for. So I think now we're ready. I think it would be a good tool. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a little bit too about, you know, how to go about it. You know, my thought was, let's just find all these grants and then we'll figure out what we can do. You know, there's money out there, we'll, you know, figure out. But, you know, like Yvette said, you might want to look at what do we need? What are we, mm -hmm. you know, programming's coming up? Is there a grant that can, you know, can fill that? So. Okay, great. Would you like to make a motion? Anybody? I would motion to move forward, I would say, with one year um, of the grant station subscription. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? I'd like to go with two. <laughs> okay. Would you like to amend your motion? I would like to amend my motion to go forward. You don't with have it. to. I mean, well, I, mean, I think if I mean discussion about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't usually sign up for two until I know if I like it. But uh -huh. you know, I mean, I, the savings are certainly there with two. Yeah. So why why two this time? Why two? Because Jen's on the board for at least another two years. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> it also it looks like they're at least in another part of their website. It looks like they're substantially higher per year, like hundreds of dollars higher. So. Um, hmm. So you think that perhaps the sale next year it wouldn't be just one hundred and seventy nine dollars? Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. It's a deal. Yeah. That's how they get you. Yeah. But <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. The whole retail price. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I will amend the motion to go forward with two year subscription to Grant Station um, website. I'll second that. Um, can I just ask, will this be coming out of the trustees account? 
paid yeah. for by the trustees. Okay. Uh, yeah, it'll come out of my task, task force. So. Okay, sounds great. Okay, um, any further discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, five zero zero. Thank you, Thanks. Jen. Any vet? I mean, I told you it's not the time. I have to research that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Moving on to the director's report. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we've received several donations this month. We've received a donation of $400 from Heather McDonald. I will make a motion that we accept the donation of $400 from Heather McDonald. Second. Okay. All those in favor? 500. Zero, zero. Thank you for that generous donation. And thank you. We've received three Melissa and Doug puzzles as a memorial donation in honor of Dr. and Mrs. John Duffy from Kathleen Hunt. And you're going to use those in house. So mm -hmm. I will make a motion that we accept the three Melissa and Doug puzzles as a memorial donation in honor of Dr. and Mrs. John Duffy from Kathleen Hunt. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Thank you. We received a donation of a Sonic the Hedgehog Lego set from Carrie Laville. We would like to add this to our Library of Things collection. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the Sonic the Hedgehog Lego set from Carrie Laville. And uh, I'm sure that'll be very popular, actually. So, <laughs> is there a second? Thank you. All those in favor? That's great. Five zero zero. Thank you. Uh, we received a donation of two children's books, Daniel Tiger's Treasury of Stories and Pete the Cat, Pete at the Beach by James Dean from Omar C. Ruiz. This was donated by a student for kindness bingo at their school. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you to Omar Ruiz for his donation. And I would like to um, make a motion that we accept the two children's books, Daniel Tiger's Treasury of Stories and Pete the Cat, Pete at the Beach. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you. And finally, we received an anom anonymous donation of three puzzles. We'd like to add this to our Library of Things collection. I make a motion that we accept the um, anonymous donation of three puzzles. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you so much. That, that's really lovely. Nice, very kind, generous donations. Yes. Um, <clears throat> moving on to personnel, I received a letter of resignation from Michelle Pasidlik, our youth services page aide. Um, in her letter, which I can pass around if you want, uh, Michelle said that working at the library for the past two years was a wonderful experience and it enabled her to really gain a lot of confidence. Um, and she has decided to go to college and pursue her dreams. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Well, she will be very missed. We've heard nothing but wonderful things about her, and we wish her all the best. And I will make a motion that we vote to accept her resignation. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you. Um, I do have a funding request from the staff that came up today in our department heads meeting, which I will pass around. <clears throat> so the staff are requesting $200 of passport funds to purchase empty cases for the Nintendo Switch games. Um, right now, they've we've moved the video games to the media section, so all of the media is together now. But they're, the games are in locking cases, and that makes the shelf very tight. So they are considering a solution where they don't use the locking cases anymore but take the games out and keep the games behind the desk um, and then have like the kind of dummy game cases mm -hmm. um, on the shelf but we don't have all of the original game cases we have some of them but we would need to purchase more dummy cases so this sure. is a request to purchase the dummy cases so we can set up that um, new way of of storing and shelving. Um, Alyssa, head of circulation, and Jen Stover, who's head of technical services, kind of work together on this solution. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like 
would be pretty that easy to sense. accomplish. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. Any questions about it? <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion that we um, um, grant the request of $200 in passport funds to purchase empty cases for our Nintendo Switch games. Second. Yeah. Any, <laughs> any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Five zero zero. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to some of the things that I highlighted in the report. Um, the elevator project has been um, delayed until I don't know when. Um, the part is supposed to ship like tomorrow, but I haven't heard anything. Um, so I, I don't know when this part is going to arrive. The thing that we're really encountering now and worried about is how this is going to affect programming because we had already planned for the elevator to be down between November, December, and we've got everything ready to start towards the end of January. Um, and then story time is also planning to start February and we've got an actress coming in to do Queen Elizabeth at the end of January. We've got um, two children's performers that are going to use the Harold Churchill money that the Friends currently have. That donation was made to the Friends. Um, and that's for February winter break and then April spring break. So we're, you know, we're just concerned about programming now because that really is the business of the library is doing programs, having events, having people come in and um it's just it's frustrating um i think in a perfect world well in a perfect world we would have had the work done on time but in a next perfect world we would want to push this work off until may when the bulk of programming especially children's programming is done we take the break before the summer reading program starts we've gone through both of the school vacations when there's more programming and um just feel like we're in better footing but i don't know when the parts coming just keeping you up to date i will say i'm not in favor of postponing it okay i will just express my concern doesn't mean that that's what the board's going to do i think that we um said we need this elevator mm -hmm. we need to get the elevator done that we don't want it to break because that is a possibility yep. that then we're putting ourselves in another position and we could say to them we want to put it off to may to june then they could have other backlogs of things yep. and then i'm worried that we're going to be finding ourselves well now we're in the summer and then we have to put it off and i i just mm -hmm. don't want to start that cycle i feel like i know that with they're behind it just make and i know that would be an inconvenience for the staff and they'd have to rearrange programming but we need to get an elevator in there. Like at some point, we might just have to be like, that. Oh, it just it, that's just my feeling. I'm, but we are a board. We can have a conversation. I don't know what other people's thoughts are on that. And maybe other people think it's okay to wait. I, it makes me anxious to tell a vendor, we're going to wait six months on it because who knows what's going to happen down the road in six months. So, and I would feel awful if we have the money, we have the contractor, we don't do it, and then the elevator breaks and they're already on another job or the elevator breaks and put someone in a precarious situation. So that's where I'm. Yeah, at. I mean, we had the queen scheduled for, you know, November or December and mm -hmm. I moved her to January. So this yeah. is, on the other hand, moving vendors that we've already booked with them and do they have availability on a different date when we want to move them? Mm -hmm. And we can't, we can't move them yet because we don't know when mm -hmm. we would have to move them to, yeah. you know, um, the last time they canceled, they canceled on us, it was like, hi, this isn't happening in two days. And we had worked really hard to notify the public. And, you know, the weeks that we were supposed to start were quieter because people had been notified, mm -hmm. you know, not to come in. So I, I think it's absolutely not an ideal situation on either end. Mm -hmm. I told, you know, I hear you. It's just now we, then we just have to deal with the other problem. Mm -hmm. You know, where do we move the programs to? Because there's not a lot of places to have a large performance mm -hmm. in town. Wow. But when um, Mia came, she made it sound like a couple of things. One, the lot, the the elevator could still run because um, they would they would put their own power to it, and so they could still run it. And two, there's only like she made it sound like there's only like the start day and like a couple of days when it's noisy. Otherwise, it 
it wasn't, if noise is a factor, it wasn't going to be loud. So. I think she also said not to keep running the library because it would slow the project down, you know, running the elevator, because it's like if we're bringing books up and down, it was don't, don't do that all, the, you know, throughout the day. Right. Um, so. <laughs> right. You know. Patrons also may not feel comfortable with Probably using not. it if it's yeah but i mean i'm just gonna say like i know the milford library has been closed for weeks mm. right because they're getting an hvac and a roof and stuff and like sometimes uh, things just have to happen in the building because you have the money and the opportunity and it's an inconvenience but like it just has to happen so i i just i feel like we have worked really hard to be start getting through into a program of doing the repairs that need to mm -hmm. be done and I just hesitate mm -hmm. to put things off. Oh, why don't we wait to hear what the vendor says? Because, you know, maybe they could come in with the part, and I don't know. Yeah, we're just trying to create a contingency plan so we're ready mm -hmm. and not caught. No, it's just hard to do when you don't know. Who yeah, needs but it. <laughs> I, I yeah. want them to discuss it. You know, I want the department heads to discuss it so they can create a plan, and if we need to go to another plan, then it's already there. You know, they've thought it through. So anyway, just letting you know, we're thinking about it. And I mean, other people on the board might feel differently than I do. I was just expressing sure. my opinion. So I mean, if anybody else has a very strong feeling in another direction, like, I don't think there's me. ever a great time. I'll yeah. Like, I don't <laughs> no, know. No. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I don't know. There's always going to be some effect. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just thinking around here. I know you're in the elevator company how flexible they would be for like an, an event like that where they postpone it so that they can't get a part mm -hmm. and it's just like well, if we have an event on this one day mm -hmm. can you flex for us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is worth the conversation to ask them okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point yep. i want to know about the queen now <laughs> <laughs> it's cheryl fay okay. and she was at the library um i think in the fall or last year she did yeah. uh she presented ruth bader ginsburg and she oh, is an okay. actress who does historical women and oh wow got rave reviews from sounds great. who attended <laughs> yeah. very nice yeah. okay um the hvac project i had to email them again and say hi where's my contract and they're working on it right now um i have not heard from Scott Levernoy, and now we are texting buddies, so I haven't heard from him, and I've texted him twice this week. Is there, um, do we have to go with Scott? Like, can we just have it put out to bid with other we can try. roofing companies? Because, um, I mean, we were on the board with Ken Wright the last time, yeah. and it seemed like that was kind of, we had a lot of problems with getting in touch with him. So if there's somebody else we can use. <laughs> okay. I'm sure. I mean, right now, yesterday, I texted him also about yesterday with the rain. We had uh, leaking in like the fiction section. It wasn't, it was in the middle of an aisle, but it was where the skylight starts. So it was that section. So, you know, Jared opened up the ceiling, but you, with water, you can't tell where something is coming from because it will right. run, you know. The so course this is will, the flat but... section of the roof that we had fixed yes. before. So that's another thing I said, hi, you know, I need I need someone to come look at this roof yeah. again. Um, and Jared went up on the roof and said, it's not the drains, <laughs> it's the roof roof. So I'm just waiting to hear back. Um, kitchen is going to, that's going to be repaired. Um, he had to reschedule, but um, let's see. We are the GMOX board is going to have a presentation um, to discuss Square uh, Thursday, and um, a couple of the GMOX libraries are currently using Square, so we're going to really be hearing from them about their experience. But this is really where the GMOX board wants to go. It's something that works. It will work. Um, so I'll I'll have that, and then I can forward information to you guys if you want to know. But we're going to need, you know, it's going to have to, the funds are going to have to be directly deposited into the trustee bank account. So that's something that we have information. I have information about how to set up 
um, square on the Aspen site, which, you know, it's all the staff side stuff. So it's not like you would know, but it's stuff that I would need from you okay. about the bank account. So once once we get past Thursday, I'll forward you some information and we okay. can figure it out. Um, we have been discussing the safety committee um, has requested that. Can you explain who the safety committee is? Just so. Um, sure. Thank you. So we have a safety committee and it is made up of representatives from each department. Um, Joanne is the chair of the safety committee um, and they meet to discuss different issues. Um, it could be um, they review the incident reports that I receive whenever someone trips on something or someone needs a band-aid. So when you say safety or, committee, is it just within the library or is it like uh, throughout the whole town? Oh no, this is a library. This oh, is just our, the library this safety is committee. The library okay. safety I was committee. under the impression it was like a town wide, so I'm glad that you're okay. No, no, no. There's a joint loss committee mm -hmm. that our staff, um, I believe it's Jared right now, who is our representative who goes to that. But then if there are issues that the joint loss committee brings up, it goes to the safety committee. Um, because it might be, wow, you have all these extension cords here. That's unsafe. Okay, safety committee might discuss that. But we have a safety um, manual that they're currently updating, and this is something the board has seen in the past and has reviewed, and there's a, a statement from the trustees about, you know, this is our safety program, and this is the purpose of the safety program, and, um, and then all of these little kind of procedures on um, the AED machine or where the first aid kits are or lots of every little minutia you could imagine. Um, one of the things they had wanted us to discuss in Department Heads Again is revisiting having Narcan on site. Um, and there were a few developments they brought to my attention, which was um, the governor wanting to have Narcan in the schools um, I haven't seen this actual report or statement myself, um, but uh, Kathy was mentioning, you know, we are in close proximity to the high school, so maybe that's something that we should have. Um, we discussed it, you know, I had department heads discuss it with all of their staff, and the staff are very in favor of having this on site. You know, um, we kicked around pros and cons, and it's just, you know, having another tool so that if a situation happens in the library, um, there are preventative measures that, that staff can take while waiting for emergency services to come. I'm very concerned about this. Okay. Yeah. I will, like, I don't know if other people have thoughts about this. When I, I, I'm, when you say that the schools have it, they also have trained medical professionals at mm -hmm. the school. There mm -hmm. are nurses. Like, I, I am... I think it sounds great in theory, but I wonder about our liability doing something like this. I wonder about staff thinking this sounds like a great idea, but when you are in an emergency situation and you have somebody that's a whole different thing and are we putting people in a position where it's going to be really, I, I just don't know. I'm, I'm, and to hear that Manchester doesn't have it, like I, I don't know. I'm not sure I want to be like the, the first ones trying this. Like that makes so, me very nervous. So we're so. not the first ones. Uh -huh. um, and this has actually been a discussion on the NAES list, on the library email list this week. Um, and I'm not sure why, but um, so I had asked the same questions that you're asking to my department head saying, Manchester doesn't have it because what the director at Manchester has said to me in our meetings, and usually they're the urban meetings, um, so bigger libraries, city libraries, um, she has said, um, when you see someone mm -hmm. come out of mm -hmm. uh, a situation where they've overdosed, they can be violent when they mm -hmm. wake up. Um, and she said, I don't want to put my staff in that, in that position. So I presented that to my department heads, and they pushed back hard on that. They said, no, that is a small uh, percentage of the time. Um, I want to prevent someone dying in the library. That's uh, what they are telling me. Yeah. Same would, as having an yeah. AED machine. we are all been trained in that. So Joanne found a uh, video from UNH that um, we watched. It was 
it's a brief video, but it kind of walks you through. Here's how this is administered. It's a nasal spray. Um, and that, you know, it was fine. It was informational. And, um, you know, we can get Narcan without cost. Um, there's a, a service in Nashua that provides boxes for them. Um, the Lebanon Public Library has it. And they just have it available for anyone to take. And they've never had an incident as far as I remember. So it's just so, open and other people can come in and take it? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Um, the Jaffrey Library has it available, and one of the emails was really coming from the Jaffrey director saying, you know, this is an excellent thing that we should have in our in our communities. Um, and there is, there's no liability because the staff would be covered under the Good Samaritan law. So I can... Um, send you training that we've looked at if we have a presentation from the contact we have in nashua i can have them come talk to you i mean we can really dissect this um issue as much as you want but i'm i'm just telling you that the staff would like to do this and they would be much more comfortable carrying narcan on their person and everyone comes from a different situation you know all of our staff have different situations and they've experienced different things and there's different levels of um, comfort with um, with all of the safety measures that we have in place, um, including all the first aid training all of us have had. Um, so I was I was surprised that they really wanted this because they did used to. Um, can I ask a question that yeah. I probably should know the answer to, but I don't? Um, are the staff trained in any sort of de-escalation techniques? In oh, case yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've got we have got a lot of training. <laughs> I'm sure for that I... kind of thing. Um, we've gone through um, something called verbal judo, which is excellent, and it's all about de-escalation. And it's actually a program that is usually presented to the police department or police departments. Um, and we had a trainer come down from Maine and do mm -hmm. a two half day training for us. Yeah. So that, I would want to as well know what the logistics of what the training would look like if they have Narcon mm -hmm. in there and know what would be staff expectations versus what's optional. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, right now, everyone is on board. Everyone mm -hmm. wants to carry it. I haven't heard from anyone saying that mm -hmm. their staff refuse. Um, it's a different group of people that are working at the library because I remember and you know years ago it was I'm not going to do mouth to mouth on anyone I'm not going to do CPR I don't want the training it's like okay um, <laughs> that means we just have to know when you're scheduled if something happens and who else do we call you know kind of thing but um, that's yeah that's one of the things was like um, is it all or nothing like if we had a staff member right. that was that was not comfortable with it I wouldn't want them to feel like they had to do it I know. I know. I I pose the question. I don't understand how you can say we want to have everyone do this and everyone's on board when I'm struggling with having active shooter training where they're like, I don't want to hear the gunshots. Well, you're going to have to hear the gunshots. So, you know, um, we're still stuck on that. You know, that's not progressing. But um, I mean, what kind of question? What do you want to know? What are your concerns? I mean, liability, like, mm -hmm. just because I'm not familiar with it, any of the process, like, is it possible to accidentally give somebody this and you think that, no. that they were on it's, something? It but will not harm them. No. Oh, okay. That's part of the video yeah. training. that oh, I can send you the video just, training. It was very yeah. informative. Yeah. I so. think because I'm just not. I'm I live in with... Narcan <laughs> all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Just being at the hospital. I mean, we have it everywhere. Um, and I would second that there is no harm. Um, there is the risk of the combative um, people um, when they do come back around. I, so there's three things that are very commonplace now being the AED, Narcan, and plus the um, Stop the Bleed kit for intended for, you know, potentially a, a shooter type situation uh, or other violent. Um, Acts. And those are really, I mean, I don't have any statistics like, you know, what um, percentage, but I can say like those three things are just becoming common, very common. Um, I would support it 
the Narcan um, myself in the library, but that's because I am just so used to seeing it and mm. and knowing it. But um, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have those concerns. I I think um, I think like with any community based intent of being a life saving measure. Um, whether it's an employee or a patron who is going to help somebody in need, somebody will help them. Um, and it's not, in my opinion, it's not reliant on the staff um, because when somebody is down, you, like people just help, <laughs> you know, people will respond mm -hmm. in some way. Um, some people will freeze and not, you know, be able to, um, you know, act in that scenario, but um, that's my thought. Yeah, I mean, I know when this came up as a question a couple of years ago, um, you know, we had a different fire chief and it, and the answer from him was, we're right down the street, it's fine. We, we'll get there in time. Um, but when the safety committee asked me to look at it again, um, you know, I've reached out to the fire department and the police department and they're like, no, it's fine. If you want to have it on site, that's fine. We can train you. So they're not concerned with us having it in a public building either. Well, I like the idea of somebody training our staff, not a video. Like, sure. I think that's okay. good mm -hmm. because then mm -hmm. somebody who's actually had the experience and is right there and the staff can mm -hmm. ask questions that they might not be answered in a video. So I think if we, I would feel more comfortable if we did do it that there was some sort of expert training that well, we the, utilized. the training would come from the contact in Nashua. Okay, that, but so just not like just a video, like there'll be No, 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 that was our initial, um, mm -hmm. the safety committee had, you know, found this video and said, let's discuss this video pros and cons. And so that was, you know, it's a short video, but it gave a, a nice overview. Um, and it was like, okay, I'm willing to discuss this, but I, I still have questions. You know, um, so why would it come from Nashua and not from our local people? There, I can't remember the name of There's the organization hubs. that's yeah. providing. Yeah, I have a big poster from them, but um, I can't think of what the name of it is. There are certain poster. hubs of distribution. Um, the state supplies the naloxone kits um, for pretty much anybody who will be able to use them or have them. Um, doorway, gateway. Honestly, I just, I just know it's a big poster and I haven't hung it up yet. I just got it because she dropped it off um, Friday. So. so, Molly, you feel like somebody who's not a medical professional is going to be okay doing yes. this? Yes. Yep. I do. And liability-wise, I mean, I know you say the Good Samaritan, but I mean... Does that hold? Does that just hold? That's just fine. Like I don't, I don't know. I just feel like there's, there's so well, many things. <laughs> like with that, uh, you know, the department heads are like, and if someone dies in the library, we could have helped. Understood. I I like, understand I that. I understand I that a hundred percent. Um, I do. I do. I just, you know, when we have it, then we're saying we're go going to do it. There's just a lot of other considerations too. So. Different world mm -hmm. that we're in. What questions do you want me to read back? Where would it be? We would want to make sure that it's somewhere. I mean, when you say anybody can get access to it, like, is there some concern about, you know, we would want children to be just grabbing it? Like, we would want, like, where would we put it? So where's the box going to be so that people can have access to it. So. Yeah. Um, we've talked about having it by the eyewash station, by the AED. We have two of those, one on each floor. We've talked about putting it in the kitchen. Um, you know, so we haven't had the, the person from Nashua come to show me the box. I've seen mm -hmm. a picture of a box, but um, I haven't seen it in real life. You also mentioned that they would carry it around all the time. In a pocket. So it's something that they would just... It's this big. Pick up, like, let's say it's in the kitchen. They'd just pick it up in the kitchen for their duty time and then put it back? 
Are they bringing it home? Is this where you just give it to everybody? Seem a little strange I, to me. I think <laughs> some. It does seem strange that they would want to carry it. Yeah, it's along, just the but... comfort level mm. of some staff yeah. and the experiences that they've had in their mm. life where they want it on their body. Mm. And if if that makes someone more comfortable and they can focus on their work, carry it in your pocket. It's fine. Mm. Fine with me. But, um... Yeah. Um, they do expire. So, mm -hmm. um, there would be some just awareness of the product itself. The storage. I, I would be a little more, a little less comfortable because what if somebody sits down and falls out of their pocket? I don't know. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's not a drug. I mean, it's not that yeah. kind of drug. It's not going to no. harm a child. If they it's not it going to, no. Mm -mm. I mean, I, I feel like you guys have to sit with this as long as I had to sit with it and <laughs> ask lots of questions. Because yeah. um, I asked all the questions and they were like, how could you with that? I think that way. I'm like, are we, are we, you know, enabling someone's drug addiction? They're like, don't. You can't say that. I'm like, I have to ask the question. Yeah. Well, you know. I think that we also have to think about it from an institutional perspective, right? Mm -hmm. We certainly want to do what's right for the community. We certainly want to help people. We certainly don't want anybody to uh, there to be a tragedy in the library. Mm -hmm. We also have to think about like all the repercussions because we serve a larger population. Um, there are people coming in and out. We have concerns about our liability. You know, I'm glad to hear that the fire department and the police think that there's no problem with it. Great. That's a great first step. You know, I think knowing we're getting training from the right people. Um, I do think that while I can understand people saying, well, there's no danger, I just think we can't be lackadaisical about things either, right? There still has to be a process in place. And honestly, if the trustees think we don't really want people carrying it around on their bodies, and what if you have an expired one that you're not keeping up with because we're not monitoring it in the box? Like, I think there might have to be some protocols mm -hmm. in place just mm -hmm. for how the staff are handling it, you know? Yeah, that sort of I mean, thing. in terms of expiration, we have, um, you know, procedures in place to check the expiration on fire extinguishers, AED, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. we have the eye wash things. I mean, mm -hmm. we right. have Right, but if that, you have one in your so. bag that you're carrying around all the time, you might not be. I'm just saying, like, there's probably, like, other things to think about. So, I, yeah. I don't know. What are our questions for okay. you, Beth? So, uh, this other. I mean, I definitely support the idea. I just want more about the logistics. I think the training, and I think you can say that our staff has de-escalation techniques, but like when somebody is lizard brain, when they are coming out of something like that, like yeah. we need to be You're prepared. Not, That's yeah. there's yeah. no de-escalation. Yeah. Like it's just there's not something that we. And I I don't sometimes. I want to make sure that the staff are prepared for what they might encounter. It might not stop and it, anybody from doing it, nor should it. But I think that the understanding of what they might encounter would be good preparation if this were to happen. So. And maybe the trainers can help to prepare for that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because de-escalation techniques don't work with somebody who's in that. That's, you've gone past beyond that. They're yeah. they're not capable of like reasoning with you, right? There's it's not. Right, because I know I was thinking with things like CPI, there's, you learn some physical restraints as well that are mm -hmm. supposedly less invasive. That's why I was just, I didn't know what the library used. Yeah, I think we need to sit with it. Like, not saying, <laughs> well, but I mean, I think that's, it's unexpected. It's, uh, like Molly said, a whole new world. It's good to hear your perspective, Molly, because you live in a world where that is a common thing, but well, many of us don't. So yeah. to kind of think about that and to think, and also to think about in a hospital, in a school, there are different, there's mm. different parameters than in a public building. So how we want it, would want to handle that wisely. And I think maybe hearing from some of the other libraries, like any, challenges they've encountered or things like that that we could learn from would probably be a good thing so i will take the link to the video too just so. yeah if you want to send that out i think that would be really helpful okay <laughs> okay great let's move on <laughs> <laughs> no it's important and i think that you know, just philosophically for me, when um, something like this comes up, the more questions we ask and disagreement we have and ways that we roll it around, then when we do put something in place, it's better and mm -hmm. we're informed and we know what we're getting ourselves into and we um, can help the staff prepare better. So I think it's all good to have sure. this. So. Absolutely. If other things occur to you, email me and I'll send it to the staff.
Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I mentioned the two performers we have coming uh, during breaks. Those are sponsored from the Friends of the Library. And we have purchased a wheelchair for the Library of Things. This was Wonderful. something that we were asked about from mm -hmm. a patron. Do you have a wheelchair to borrow? And we are like, no, nope, that's a good one. So um, I asked my daughter-in-law, who is a nurse, um, what kind of wheelchair can you recommend to me? And I need it to be this, 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 this. And she sent us to a website, and um, Jen looked over some of the specs and picked one. And it is in the library, ready to be checked out. Um, so it's it folds, um, it's neat. We'll see if that's something that people need. That's fantastic. I've actually seen some people posting in the for local forums looking oh. for that. So. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, right. we have a, we have a wheelchair. They can check it out. Um, I did include an update for the legislation we're watching. Um, the uh, NHMA now has a list on their website of the bills that um, pertain to libraries. This is something you you. If you're following it, you will recognize these bills, but now we have a page on their website, too. Uh, and that is pretty much everything I had highlighted. I don't know if you have anything else you want me to answer questions about. Or... No. Okay. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Yvette. You're welcome. Uh, treasurer's report. Okay. So this is for the month of November. I'm looking at our balance sheet. And at the beginning of November in our fines account, we hit $7,487.13. And we concluded the month with $5,759.66. And then under our special account, we began the month with a balance of $58,659.54. And then we ended the month with $56,936.29. Any questions? I have a question. It, it, it's, it's on the back of this. It says finance charges, and there's like four or three finance fees. Do we not pay stuff off? like? Like are the are these financial charges for like a credit card or yes. Working on that. So are they just late? Or yep. No. Okay. Because that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. So <laughs> like not to see that. Do you like to make that an action item? That we like? <laughs> an action item already. <laughs> From my evaluation, is try to get all of the business cards paid on time. Mm -hmm. And there are several business cards. So we're working on it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. OK. Maybe just somebody puts it in their calendar, bill comes in. It's in my calendar. Me. OK. It's, I believe, okay. I, I'm working. Okay, any other questions for Janet? Okay. All right. I do have a comment that I saw. Um, the annual pass for the Museum of Fine Arts was on there, and I just used that on Friday. It only cost um, $10 a ticket, and we got into the special exhibit and everything, so that would have been uh, $40 or something. Yeah. So it's really a great um, deal for us to have that. So Great. Thank you. Okay, um, we have acceptance of minutes. We have three sets of minutes we need to accept. The first one is from as our non-public meeting minutes from November 21st. Um, I did make a couple of grammar corrections when I reread it. Okay. So and it says, Terry Knowles is consultant, $75 an hour to review the ongoing budget. And okay. then... Um, I just put in Janet's last name, Janet Krupp, second with the motion. Okay, and I'm not sure if Robbie or Ruth Marie, if you were here at this meeting. And Robbie was not. Robbie was not, okay, and Ruth Marie. Ruth Marie was acting. I was the okay, so you were, okay. Okay, great. And there was another meeting in November that was held. 
Okay. So I'm going to make a motion that we accept the non-public meeting minutes for November 21st with the grammatical corrections. Second. Okay. So all those in favor? Four. Zero. Well, I, I, how would we do this? Because yeah, I guess you would. Could can you vote on well, the minutes no, that you can't? He's here, so it'd be yeah. Four, so zero, one, so uh, he would abstain. Yep. So okay. Okay. So four. Are those opposed and abstaining. Okay. So four zero one. Okay. Public minutes. I did um, make a correction to to your name, Deb. My. Um, Computer always wants to switch it to level instead oh, okay. of that's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I corrected that, and I also wanted to point out um, on page two, acceptance of minutes. So we didn't have a motion for the non-public minutes last time, so we need to re-vote on that. Okay. All right. So um, okay, let's start with that. Um, I'll make a motion that we accept the October seventeenth. 2023 non-public minutes. Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Okay. Five zero zero. Thank you. And then um, I read these and didn't even see where my name was spelled wrong. But okay. Um, so I make a, a motion that we accept the November twenty first meeting minutes. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Four. Um, opposed and abstaining. So it's 401. Thank you. And then we have our non public meeting minutes from November 27th as well. Any corrections or comments? Okay, um, I'll make a motion that we accept the November 27th non public meeting minutes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Okay, great. I'm so I'm confused. Oh yeah, twenty seventh. Okay. Ah, oh, what day was it? All right. Okay, those are the meeting minutes, I believe. Oh, it's getting late. Okay, let's see. Where were we? So next on our agenda is, I believe. Let's go to Friends of the Library. Jen, do you have I, committee updates? Oh, committee updates. Are there any committee updates? I'll just go through that. Okay. Hearing none. What's that? Friends. Oh, that's what yep. okay, yes. Yeah, so friends. You were right. Okay, I was right. I went I had to Jen, you confused me. So we're going to the friends update. Go ahead. Okay, um, as Yvette mentioned, the Churchill donation of $800 um, will fund two children's programs, um, February and April vacation. And then um, I shared with them that their quarterly donation is um, included in our anticipated funds in the budget, as Jana had requested. And uh, the only other thing I have is they are reviewing options for New Hampshire Arts and Humanities programs um, to sponsor. Great. Is there going to be a book sale in January? Yes, 19th, unless the elevator pushes it off. Okay, so tentatively a book sale. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, um, public uh, development fund has not met since our last meeting. Um, town center, Karen is our representative and she is not here. Um, and library um, board of trustees, are there any? There were no committees that met for that. So, okay. So, reviewing December action items, what I have is that I'm going to reach out to Deb Hoadley and let her know that we'd like to continue with her as our consultant for the strategic planning process. Yvette is going to bring questions to Alyssa to get back and get the, the information back to us so we can review our um, thoughts and possible policies on the collection um, agency. And then um, Yvette's going to send us the link to the Narcan video and bring some of our questions and concerns to the staff and maybe the library community and see what we can find out about that. Were there any other things? Um, potentially starting the RFP for the roof without talking to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, anything else? Or any other business to come before the board. Okay, 
Well, then I will just say that um, our next meeting is going to be January 16th, but it will not be here at Town Hall. It will have to be at the library because this room has already been booked for something else. So we've got, if you could make sure we have a room available. Yep. And um, Jen did reach out to see if it was possible to have that recorded, and I believe the answer was it is not. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, yeah. so that, that meeting will not be recorded. Um, Friends of the Merrimack Public Library will be meeting January 29th at 7 p.m. in the director's office. And the Development Fund is scheduled to hold a meeting on February 12th um, at 5 p.m. in the Lowell Room. Are there any other comments? Okay, and I we do not have any reason to go into non-public session. So with that, I will make a motion that we adjourn at 823. Yes. Okay, all those in favor? Five zero zero. Great. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody.